Hello guys, welcome back to my channel where the makeup and sass keeps you coming back for more. It's Jilly here and today I'm going to be bringing you guys another episode of Jilly Talks. We haven't done one of these episodes in quite a bit but I just figured I'd share a little bit of knowledge with you guys about how my rotations for pharmacy school have been going. If you didn't know, I am a fourth year pharmacy student. Thank God I'm almost done. Um, and I am currently going through my advanced professional practice, whatever experience rotations. I can't remember what APPI stands for, but if you're in pharmacy school, you know. Um, but, so yeah, if you want to find out what's been going on, I've already done one block. I'm on block two. I will tell you some tips, some tricks, all that stuff, how to impress your preceptors all that jazz, all the stuff that students want to know, then please keep on watching. And if you want to see more like stuff like this related to like educational things, because I'm like, I, I do a lot, you know, in school, and you want to learn more of the things that I've been doing to kind of help build up my CV, then please hit that subscribe button down below, comment down below, whatever you'd like to know. I love sharing what I know. I just love sharing my knowledge. I'm not a gatekeeper. I will share everything with you, okay, as long as it's not like PHI or something. And then um, go ahead and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. All of those are underscore it's Jilly. Now let's jump into today's video. Okay, so first and foremost, to get started, um, I am going to preface this video by saying that I'm not going to share too many details because obviously uh, we work in medicine, we all should know about PHI and just like keeping some things a little bit private because like my preceptors obviously don't ask to be part of my online world and I don't want to share information about them. That would be um, rude or anything like that. So I won't um, share any personal information or specific details, but I will tell you guys what my appy schedule is looking like. So first block, I had infectious diseases. Second block, I am on drug information. Third block, I have like a peds elective uh, rotation that I will be doing. Fourth block, I will be at poison control. Fifth block, I have my am care rotation, so ambulatory care. Sixth block, I'm off, thank God, because that's when residency interviews are, and I'm going to be applying for residencies um, in case you didn't pick that up yet. Uh, seventh block, I have my internal medicine acute care. And then I ended off eighth block with community. I am super excited for that because by eighth block, I know I will be pooped because I'm pooped and it's only second block. Okay. So I'm really excited about my schedule. I really do think I have a really nice, well-rounded schedule that has a lot of diverse um, learning opportunities. So I think that'd be my first and for like my first advice for everyone is to try to get a schedule that has like a diverse um, range of experiences within it. Like say you're like headed for, I want to be an internal medicine clinical pharmacist. Okay, that's cute, but don't do five internal medicine rotations. Because if you're applying for residency, like chances are you're applying for like a PGY-1. And then if you like want to do a second year, like that kind of stuff matters your second year kind of. But for PGY1s in general, you really want to show that you're able to work in a variety of environments and thrive in a variety of environments. So I definitely would not recommend doing a million of the same type of rotation. And that's why I like my schedule so much. I feel like I get a little bit of everything with my schedule. And I feel like each rotation is actually pretty unique in the things that they're offering me. Like some of them are very, very clinical based, but some of them are clinical management. It's like, it's a wide breadth of um, information that I am going to be learning this next year. So I'm very, very excited about that. Um, next one that I have to tell you is every single day of your rotation is basically you interviewing and if you're pharmacy like residency bound or even just bound for a pharmacy job out of pharmacy school you're gonna need recommendation letters so even if you're having the worst day on the planet when you get to your rotation site Take it all, shove it in a box, leave it in your car, leave it at home because it's not the place for it at rotations. Like your preceptors don't want to hear about your problems. Like, I mean, unless it's like a serious problem, right? If you're like 
you know, there's like a serious medical issue or family emergency, yeah, sure, tell them. But your everyday day-to-day -day woes, nobody wants to hear about that. Keep it to yourself. Like I'm, like, I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm like legitimately being serious with you. Because these people want to see that you're able to just handle a very rigorous, uh, like, six weeks of rotation and being with them and performing at your best and when i say at your best i'm talking about 110 not 100 not 90 i'm literally talking about over 100 percent every single day that you're there because if you're doing residency you're also trying to get these recommendation letters you want them to write very strong positive letters for you so you want to make a very strong positive um you know, impression on your preceptor. And then if you have like a co-student with you at your rotation, you also really, even if you don't like them, by God, even if you don't like them, you really want to show your preceptor that you know how to work well in a team. You get along with that person, even if you don't, because it just shows them all those like things that people want to see in you, you know? So that's where I'll leave that. I'll also say, like, you don't really have to prepare for any of your rotations before you go to them unless your preceptor gives you something to read or look up before you get there. But so my school does six week rotations and um, I would recommend emailing your next block preceptor by week four of the previous block, right? You always want to email your preceptors about three weeks before your start date because people are busy, sometimes people are really bad at answering emails, and you wanna give them enough time to have answered your email. If they don't email you back within a week and a half to two weeks, then you still have a week to email them again and say, hi, um, uh, just wanted to check in with you. Um, I, you know, maybe say nicely that you sent them an email. Don't just be like, I sent you an email, girl, where you at? nicely say these things use very nice fluffy polite words to get your point across and just check in with them and say hey I don't know maybe you missed my last email but I wanted to check in with you about um, is there anything you'd like for me to read anything you'd like for me to know before this rotation starts like what is the dress code like do you want me to wear scrubs do you want me to wear a professional dress um, where what's the parking situation is there like a cafeteria because like some people like to just buy lunch because they don't have to worry about it. I'm a meal prepper, so like that doesn't bother me. I bring my lunch everywhere I go because your girl will not be starving, okay? If there's one thing about me, I will not be starving. Um, so I always like bring my lunch or whatever. And on that note about things that you bring to rotation, um, guys, this probably doesn't like you know apply to you as much but my girls out there y'all know girls you know um to your rotation please bring all of the things that you want your toiletries all that good stuff please have it with you i literally have a little toiletry bag with all these goodies in it for anything that could potentially happen to be on rotation because for me this like my rotations are not the time people are like oh my god i'm so sorry like do you have a band-aid do you have an advil oh like do you have like hand sanitizer or lotion like no i've got it all if you guys want me to do a video of what's in my backpack um when i go to rotations please comment down below give this video a thumbs up i will do that for you because there is nothing a girl could want that isn't in my backpack um you may call me excessive maybe i'm bringing too many things but i like to be prepared and i don't want to be caught off guard and it's also kind of nice oh you want a tissue i've got you boo okay <laughs> I'm just saying, um, it's all those little things. And then as far as like makeup goes for girls at like rotations, to be honest, it really depends on your rotation, right? So drug info for me right now is like in an office. So I feel a little bit more comfortable wearing like makeup every day um, and being a little bit more dressed up. But if you're like on the floors, you're rounding, you're walking, please make sure you're comfortably dressed. Like you want to be professionally dressed, but be comfortable. Like if you're walking around on the floor, this is not the time to wear heels because sometimes these teams will be like, mm, let's not wait for the elevator. Let's take the stairs and the stairs, you're thinking they're going up one to two floors. Next thing you know, you're going up six floors. This is literally happened to me my last block. So please believe me when I tell you that this is like actual things that just like happen. Um, so you definitely want to be prepared. Wear like flats that are comfortable. Make sure you have band-aids on you if you know like these are the flats that give you blisters. Then pre-band-aid. Buy those little things that go in your shoes to make them more comfortable. All I'm saying is you just don't want mishaps happening when you're at rotation. Like this is not the time. You know? You know.
And I think um, just another point to have a pretty successful rotation and do well is to really show initiative to your preceptor. Um, we're all really tired when doing rotations, especially if you have a rotation and you have an internship. You're basically like working 60 hours a week. It's crazy. It's awful. And then you getting assignments to work on, things to look up at home from your preceptor. Like each block is going to be different and I think you just have to mentally prepare yourself for what that block is going to bring. First week of rotation, ask your preceptor like what are your expectations? Like what do you want from me? Okay? Because you don't want it to be week three and then for them to be like, well, you didn't meet this, that, and a third. And it's like, well, you didn't tell me what your expectations are. And then I guess I fumbled the bag by not asking you what your expectations are. So you always want to make sure you're on the same page with your preceptor because you don't want them to be like, well, they didn't meet my expectations and nobody talked about expectations, you know? So just kind of get that out of the way so you know what you're aiming for, you know what they want to please them. And that's what I mean by taking initiative. If your preceptor is like talking about this, ooh, like this would make a great case presentation, then be like, hi, can I do a case presentation on it? I mean, don't sign up for every single like potential suggestion that's out there because you'll like overwork yourself, but sign up for one or two things extra and I guarantee you that's gonna impress them because not every student is doing that. Okay, on that note, another, so just moving on, so next, I had to drink some water, my throat was dry. Um, so another like tip would be to not be afraid to say, I don't know, but I will look that up. And when you say you will look it up, you better have a notebook, your iPad, your computer, something to write that down, whatever they're talking about, and look it up. Because I guarantee you, whether it's tomorrow, it's after lunch, it's two weeks from now, they will come back to the topic. And if you did not do your research and you don't know what they're talking about, that's not a good look. That is not a good look for you. So I always like, if my preceptor was talking, I, my first lack was infectious diseases and infectious diseases was my worst section of like therapeutics, right? Which is why I wanted to do a rotation in infectious diseases. I wanted to work on my weaknesses that I recognized from class. Um, if she said something, if she mentioned a paper that I didn't know about, I'd be like, oh, can you send me, what's the author's name? Like, what's the paper? I'll look it up. I'm going to read it, and then we can discuss it later. Yeah, like, I, I haven't heard of this paper. Because these people will literally be pulling papers, like, out of thin air, and then you're like, never read that, didn't have time to do all that other reading with all the other reading I had to do for classes. So I would be reading papers every single night, looking things up every single day, because I did not want her to come and like bring it up again and be like, oh, so remember we talked about that? And then me standing there giving her a blank look. No, I wanted to be prepared and I always wanted to like be on top of those things. Um, and then on top of being, you know, just in that same topic, if you're being assigned projects or assignments to do, if there's an assigned due date, please make sure you're turning your things in on time. Most preceptors are pretty willing to work with you about changing deadlines, but they're not going to work with you if you're trying to change the deadline an hour before it's due. Um, I'd say if the week of the assignment is coming up and you are behind, you don't know what you're doing, then I would take my preceptor aside and say, hey, I'm having a little bit of issue with this assignment. These are my questions. Have real questions for them, people. Um, and I just wondering if you could help me out. I think I might need a bit of a deadline extension if that would be okay with you. If not, I can make this work and I will make it work um, because it's really up to them to decide if you get the extension. You don't just get an extension because you want it, you know? You know. Um, and then let me see. Let me think what else that I can like part upon you guys as I'm only in my second block of um, rotations. Um, I think another thing about picking rotations is what I kind of alluded to a little bit earlier is picking rotations that will uh, challenge you in a way that is useful. If a rotation at your school is known for being extremely difficult and demanding and that's just not your style, please do not rank that rotation. You will literally screw yourself over. And I don't know about other pharmacy school schools, but like my school gives us like letter grades for our appy rotations. So like 
getting a B on a rotation is just not what you want to be doing right now, right? Everybody's in it to get the A's, or at least I am. So don't pick rotations where you've heard things about them. And maybe those people over exaggerated. Maybe they like didn't work hard enough. You have to take everything you hear with a grain of salt and assess it for yourself but also realize that you need to assess it for yourself. And if you know that professor, maybe they taught you in school, you kind of like know them a little bit more, then don't, then make the right decision for you. I tried to pick rotations on my weaknesses, was my angle when I was ranking rotations. Um, our school didn't really do a lot of things about pediatrics, so that's why I was like, I'd love to do a peds rotation. Our school um, did drug information, and I really like struggled a lot with drug information. And when we took um, drug literature, um, as well that was a struggle for me so that's why I'm doing a drug info rotation because I really want to work on that skill because as a pharmacist people are always coming up to you and asking you drug information questions and if you don't know how to utilize the resources that your institution has to find an evidence-based answer for your person who's asking you the question then you're failing the, the, the profession you know you're failing pharmacists everywhere <laughs> I'm being dramatic but you know you know what I mean and so that was kind of like how I went about picking um, my rotations so yeah just like a little food for thought for you when you guys are doing your rankings and um, after rankings come out if you didn't get the rotations you want ask your team I don't know what they call them at schools at our school we call them the EE team ask them hey can you tell me what, are, what rotations are available for this block? Because I don't want the person that I have. Like, I want something more clinical. I want something more amp care. I want, like, another community. Like, ask them what is left. Because there will be a lot more left over than you think. And you can then try to pick from what is left to really tailor the best schedule for you and for whatever future career path you want to take your farm D degree into. Um, but I think I've done a lot of yammering on. So that's really all for me right now. I will try to do like an update video kind of before ASHP mid-year. So probably November I'll do another video of how my rotations have been going. Um, if you guys have any questions or concerns, please ask me down below or you can DM me on Instagram. I will happily answer any questions that you guys have. If you're thinking about pharmacy school, you're a first year, any of the above, please ask me. I love answering questions. I'm not a gatekeeper. I love sharing this knowledge because a lot of it was stuff that I wish I knew, but I just had to learn the hard way. So yeah, without further ado, that's going to be the end for today's video. I really hope this was helpful, guys. Um, and I really hope you learned something from it. So if you want to see more things like this, subscribe to my channel, <laughs> maybe. And go ahead and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. All of that is underscore it's Jilly. And I'll see you guys next time.